Okay, so we're now recording and we are just reviewing common questions and topics uh, in our genetics unit. So question number one on the review questions that I posted says, what kind of bonds hold the complementary bases of DNA together? Anybody want to unmute yourself and try to answer that? Peptide. Uh, just uh, when you unmute yourself, just say, you know, just like give it a second to unmute it so that everyone can hear it. Ethan, I think that was you. Try it again, Ethan. Unmute. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's hydrogen bonds. I think you are absolutely correct. Those hydrogen bonds are a very weak type of bond. <coughs> Pardon me. And so they're easily split, and that's what holds the bases together. The A's and T's are held together. The G's and C's are held together by those hydrogen bonds. Correct. Next question. A polypeptide, aka protein, is a chain composed of what building blocks? So what kind of building blocks build a polypeptide? Unmute yourself if you think you can do this. Amino acids. Nice, amino acids. Who was that? Who, who am I giving credit to? Me, Aiden. Me, okay, me doesn't help, but Aiden helps. Thank you, good job, Aiden. Which base is not used in DNA, but is used in RNA? This is important for your period. Right. Who is that? Uranine. Uh, no, we have, which is not used in DNA. I mean, DNA. thymine, thymine. Uh, no, there. Th thymine is in DNA. Thymine. Uracil is going to be the one not in DNA. Okay. So, and what you might want to do is have your notes out and just be jotting down any facts that come across. Even if you didn't print out these practice questions, just have a sheet of paper and uh, pen out so you can take down some notes on important info. Uh, so yeah. So remember the rule in pairing in DNA: A and T go together. Adenine, thymine. But in RNA, there's no thymine. So instead of thymine, there's a U for uracil, and that's gonna be what pairs with adenine when you're forming RNA. Uh, what controls the sequence, that's the order, of amino acids in a protein? And remember, if you're gonna unmute yourself, just give it a second to kick in before you say your answer. Isn't it like the sequence of codons in R mRNA? Yes, which is directly determined by the sequence of bases in the original DNA strand. Yes. So most the, the, the most uh, the most accurate answer would say you would say is the correct bases in DNA strands. So like the, the A, T, T, G, C, C, whatever sequence of bases in the DNA is going to be what then determines the sequence in RNA as you just brought up which is then gonna also be what's read by the ribosome when it's putting together the protein and putting the right amino acids in the right spot. So ultimately, the controller is the DNA sequence. Okay, DNA sequence of bases. Next question, what is the name of the process by which DNA in the nucleus, it can't leave, is copied into messenger RNA? So messenger RNA is created in DNA's image because DNA can't leave and we need that code to get out of the nucleus. So what do we call that process when we're forming messenger RNA? Is it transcription? Yes, it is transcription, good. We transcribe DNA into messenger RNA so that it's able to leave the nucleus and ultimately go and get translated once it's in the cytoplasm and meets up with the ribosome. The ribosome translates that messenger RNA into building the protein in exactly the right order of amino acids. Uh, next question, what process is occurring when DNA, oh, someone's joining us a little bit late. Let me let them in. Okay. Okay. If you're just joining us, we're going over the practice questions, the genetics one review questions that I posted on Google Classroom. Uh, I have them up on my screen. If you don't have access to them, we are on this one right now. Here we go. What process is occurring when DNA separates into two strands and makes identical copies of itself? What do we call that? Replication. Replication is correct. Uh, it's not a race or a competition. In fact, I don't even know who answered that, but I, if it's the same people over and over again, don't be shy. You can chime in. It's not up to just a handful. I see there's a lot of us, so don't be shy. Open up your mic and just chime in. Uh, next question. If, given that mRNA sequence, the bases are AGU, 
what will be the corresponding tRNA sequence? Remember, mRNA is going to be what gets formed in the nucleus and tipped into the ribosome. And then tRNA are going to actually be the RNAs that bring the right amino acid over. So they have to have a base sequence that pairs with the mRNA sequence. Um, so that we're looking for the anti-codon on tRNA if the codon reads AGU. What would be the correct base sequence? Um, isn't it UCA? Correct, because A pairs with U, G pairs with C, and U pairs with A. We have another latecomer. Let me let him in quickly. Okay. All right, next question. What is the sugar component of RNA? And this helps if you know what RNA stands for. Ribose. Yeah, ooh, there's like a tie there, ribose, as opposed to the sugar of DNA, which is deoxyribose. Next question. Hemoglobin, insulin, and maltase are all examples of which kind of organic compound? Hint, this is the main job of the cell is to make these. Proteins? Hemoglobin is a blood protein. Insulin is, an, is a hormone, which is a protein. Maltase is an enzyme, which is a protein. There's many examples of proteins that we've discussed throughout this year, um, and their main jobs are all very specific because they are specifically shaped proteins made by specific cells for specific roles. Okay, this one I can't highlight because it's actually a picture instead of typed text. Whoops, moving it around here. I'll just draw the box around it. Okay, so the next question we're looking at as one with the blue box around it on your screen, which two bases are always found in the same amount in DNA? Which would be the correct one? I'm not gonna read all the choices. Adenine and thymine. It has to be any two bases that are a correct pair following the pairing rule. And in this set of choices, you are correct, sir. So adenine and thymine are the pair. Next question. During the first step in replication of DNA, what would need to happen first? Uh, winds, oh, unwinds. I was going to say the same answer as there twice, but it's not. Read carefully. Unwinds is there and winds is there. The double helix unwinds. We need unwinding to happen um, before any of the subunits can come in and before it can rewind itself and therefore create the, the next piece. Good. Uh, a mutation is inherited, meaning it's passed from one generation to the next, if it. Is it if it occurs in a gamete used in sexual reproduction? You got it. For inheritance to happen, that DNA has to come from the parent's DNA, which is going to be all the DNA in the gametes that end up producing the offspring. So the first choice occurs in a gamete used in sexual reproduction is the best choice. Uh, next question here, we have a diagram that is something that should look familiar to. It's a karyotype. It's basically a map of chromosomes in size order in their uh, homologous pairs. Um, and you should see two for every chromosome. This question says, information in this karyotype indicates that the individual is A, so we have to be able to look for which uh, biological sex they are and look for any particular chromosomal disorder that can be determined. All right, so look carefully. You should see there are two X chromosomes, so that tells you the biological sex, and then you should notice that they, all the chromosomes have only two copies as they should, with the exception of this one, number 21, has three copies. Um, wouldn't it be four then? It would be choice four. It's a female because it's two X's, and she has the disorder called Down syndrome, which is indicated by having a third copy of chromosome number 21. You got it. Female with Down syndrome. She's got three instead of two. Now that error, that extra chromosome, probably came from an error in meiosis when those chromosomes were being placed into the gametes that her that she was formed from. So she got an extra chromosome either from her mom or her, or her dad. You can't tell from the picture, 
um, either the egg cell or the sperm cell had one extra, and then therefore she now has a total of 47 instead of the normal total of 46, right? Female with Down syndrome. Scrolling back up here, there's another question up on the right. Okay, this little chart, hereditary information is stored in genes, which are made of blank, which can replicate and also can control production of blank. So this question is only asking you about molecules represented by box B, um, but to figure that out, you kind of have to realize what box A is. So A has to be genes are made of DNA or genes are made of base sequences, et cetera. And then that DNA or base sequences controls production of which of those choices? Would it be proteins? It absolutely is proteins. That's the whole goal of DNA. DNA is the code for how to build a protein. It's the instruction for how to build a protein. For a cell to know how to make insulin, it needs to read the gene or the, the, pro the DNA that codes for making that protein. Insulin is a protein. Okay, let's scroll down to the next page. Uh, Let's do this top one first, it's two and one. The coded information of a DNA molecule is determined by So basically it's saying what part of the DNA is the information? It is the actual code that gets used for making proteins. Should I start calling on people like I would in class and just unmute you and say, you're up? We're looking at this question. The coded information of a DNA molecule is determined by? The sequence of nitrogenous bases. Yes, it's sequence of nitrogenous bases. The base sequence is the code. So if your base sequence says T, 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 A, G, T, and it's different than my base sequence, that's A, 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 C, G, A, we have different base sequences. We have different uh, codes for how to make a certain protein. Okay, next question. A single gene mutation, stay still right here. A single gene mutation results from gene mutation as opposed to a chromosomal mutation. Type of mutation differs. Um, a change in the base sequence in DNA? Yes, the base itself has to be changed. And this could be just one base out of millions of bases, just one T where there was supposed to be a G, et cetera. A different base can be a gene mutation that leads to the production of a protein being misformed and misshaped. Next question. All right, they provide you with molecule one. You should recognize that there's T's and A's and C's and G's, and so you should recognize molecule one is DNA. Then they're showing an arrow leading to molecule two, where there's no more T's, now there are U's. So that should be a big clue that this is going to be RNA as opposed to DNA. And molecule three is produced as a result of that code. So the building blocks of molecule three are known as, so you should realize that those that molecule three is a protein, and therefore what are the building blocks of proteins? Amino acids. Amino acids, you got it. So this little square could be the amino acid tyrosine. This little circle could be the amino acid valine. This little diamond could be the amino acid tryptophan. Um, so each of those represent a different amino acid, and the order that they're strung along in is going to affect the shape and the folding of that protein and therefore affect its job. Okay, bottom left. Which statement best explains the fact that some identical twins appear different from one another? They might have identical DNA, but they can still appear different. <clears throat> I gave away part of the answer in my explanation.
Um, is it two? Their DNA is essentially the same. That's correct. Identical twins have the same DNA, barring any mutations that occurred during their life cycle, lifetime. And the environment plays a significant role in the expression of their genes. That is correct. And that's uh, some notes that you took earlier this week. So the environment plays a significant role. So identical twins who are exposed to different things in their environment might end up looking different and having different manifestations of different disorders um, because their genes are impacted differently by their environment. This could include toxic pollution exposure. This could include nutrition, having a healthy nutritious diet or having imbalanced malnutrition. This could include diet and exercise in one twin versus smoking and other unhealthy habits in another twin. So those external factors in the environment definitely can have an impact on how your genes get expressed, on whether your genes get turned on or turned off and therefore affect expression um, and uh, sometimes appearance. The question focused on appearance, but it's not always just appearance. There's more than that. All right, so let's scroll up to the top right. Okay. In a particular variety of corn, the kernels turn red when they're exposed to sunlight. In the absence of sunlight, the kernels remain yellow. Based on this information, it can be concluded that the color of these corn kernels is due to three. Three, the effect of environment on gene expression, right? There's, so these corn kernels are within the same corn plant, so their genes are the same, but in some of them, their genes are being activated or deactivated differently based on their exposure, in this case, to sunlight. And that can happen with other environmental exposures like temperature. Uh, so if you read through the notes earlier, in the week, I don't know, was it yesterday or Monday? I can't even remember. I don't even know what day today is. Um, but I had you reading through different examples of how the environment can impact genes. Uh, one of them was how the leaves turn um, green when it's when there's a lot of light in the spring and the summer, but leaves of a plant turn other colors in the fall when there's less light. So the amount of light available is also going to affect the expression of the chlorophyll gene. Uh, so it's a very similar question to that concept. Okay, so yes, that was number choice three was correct. Next question, the ozone layer of Earth's atmosphere. We're gonna talk more about the ozone layer when we get to a later unit on the human impact on the environment, but it's, its job is to help protect and filter ultraviolet radiation, so they tell you that. Uh, as the ozone layer is depleted, meaning it's wearing away and it's getting broken down, more ultraviolet radiation reaches the Earth's surface. So you gotta think about what do I know about ultraviolet radiation? This increase in ultraviolet radiation may be harmful because it can directly cause ultraviolet radiation. Why is it bad? You can think about directly on you and your body. Your skin is most exposed to ultraviolet radiation, UV radiation. Why is it bad? What can it do? Mutations in the DNA of organs. Yes. So it can cause mutations in DNA, not just you, other organisms as well that are exposed to too much UV radiation. Um, we see it in ourselves when our skin is exposed to too much, muta too much mutations from UV radiation and we end up with skin cancer thanks to those mutations, okay? All right, next question. Which of the following diagrams best represents the relationships between these terms? So you gotta recognize the kind of the scale and scope and sequence of these terms. What's the smallest, what's the biggest? Let's see which one makes the most sense. Three. Choice three has a gene being the smallest, a chromosome, then a nucleus, then a cell. So if you would read that in kind of like a sentence or paragraph form, you could say that a cell contains a nucleus. That's why the nucleus is like in the little smaller box underneath the cell. The nucleus contains a chromosome or many chromosomes and chromosomes contain genes. So that scale and sequence there is best uh, depicted by choice three. Good. All right. And oh, that's the end. That's the last of my questions. 
Okay, so any questions, whether they're related to these or related to anything else that I've had you look at? Anything you wanna go over? Just unmute yourself and start talking if you have a question. Okay, nobody's talking. So hopefully that means you understand. That's great. Uh, or you walked away from your computer just leaving this on so it would look like you're here, which you never have to do, by the way, because this is optional. You don't ever have to come on a Zoom if you don't have availability to a computer at this time, I understand, which is why they're going to be recorded and posted so you can look at it later if you need to. Um, so again, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and start talking. I'm done with uh, everything I wanted to do. So if you're finished and you want to go back to doing other assignments, you're welcome to bow out and say bye. I have a question kind of related to this. Okay, what's up? Um, it says on Google Classroom that like, it's an assignment that's getting graded. Like, do I have to turn anything in? Which assignment is that? Um, review of molecular genetic topics, or is that something different? Uh, well, so I posted two things for today. One of them is actually a review packet that I do want you to do. Um, the other was this like Zoom meeting with the link to these questions we just went over and there's nowhere to submit that because we were just going to be going over it. So I didn't need you to submit it to me. Um, but one thing does need to be submitted. You want me to pull up the classroom and share it with you? Make sure I'm looking about the mm, No, I found it. I found it. See it? Mm -hmm. Let me just double check myself. Here we go. Okay, classroom. Oh, wrong class. This is my college class. Okay, so for you guys, I put for, uh, and I'm going to start going by week instead of by topic, just so we can stay more organized if this goes longer. It's, it's not it's too much to do by topic. Um, yeah, so you can tell the difference between an assignment by the little icon, this little, uh, am I still screen sharing? Do you see my classroom up right now? Yeah. Okay, sure. okay. So the little green icon that looks like a clipboard is an indicator that you have to submit something, turn something in. That's an actual assignment. When you see the little green icon that looks like a, I don't know what that's supposed to look like, to be honest, like a piece of paper with a bookmark on it, maybe is what this is supposed to look like. Um, that is just a material, it is not an assignment. There's not gonna be anything there that you can physically submit. It's just some kind of material I'm sharing with you or presenting with you. It would be nice if Google would maybe color code those differently. That would be cool, but they don't. Okay. Any other questions, whether it's tech related or or classroom related or content related? No? All right. Okay, well, I don't know if you're just being shy because I told you I was recording, but uh, if that's the case, I am going to stop recording. Let me go into this right now. Stop share. More. Stop recording.